Well, it is the third weekend in a row that it is snowing here, but we are going to take a look at our second collection of spring patterns. This time it's Vogue. Last week we reviewed the Simplicity early spring patterns. So if you haven't seen that yet, click the little doodad up here at the top of your screen and it will take you to that video so you can watch. But today is all about Vogue. Um, if you're watching this like close to the time when I'm actually publishing the video, um, Vogue patterns will be on sale at Joanne next week. You can check my Instagram um, where I post a calendar view of the Joanne sales so you can see when the pattern sales overlap with the coupons and it's just a much easier way to digest everything they've got going on. So pretty sure Vogue is on sale next week. If not, then the week after, but it's all on my Insta. All right, so let's check out what Vogue has for us for spring. They are leading and leaning into this yellow suit um, because it was a, what was on both of the little cover pages. Um, this is a, looks to be an in-house design. Uh, size options are 8 to 16 and then 18 to 26. So we do have an extra size, um, but they have knocked away the size six. Um, so just something to kind of keep in mind there. We'll keep an eye on those uh, size options as we look through all the patterns as well. But this is described as a semi-fitted lined below hip length jacket with a notched collar, shoulder pads, princess seams, flaps, welt pockets, and two I'm sorry, long two-piece sleeves with a non-working vent and button trim. Semi-fitted high-rise pants have flared legs, stitched front crease, fly, zipper, contour waistband, and hook and bar closure. So pretty, like, traditional. Pretty, like, you know, blazer, pant, suit, through and through. No fancy frills, nothing over the top. I mean, maybe, maybe we can get a little bit picky about how kind of wide this lapel is. That might be the only real, like, you know, unique design feature of this. Obviously, it fits her exceptionally. We've got all these little fitting um, lines here, these seam lines, the two-piece sleeve you guys know I love. 99% sure there is a shoulder pad in here, um, which really helps aid in the sort of, you know, inverted triangle of the bodice. <clears throat> and then the flare pants add to the upright triangle of the leg and, and, you know, bottom half of your body. So we've got inverted triangle into a regular triangle. We've got the center front crease, which I gotta be honest, I haven't seen one of those in a very long time, in five, 10 years maybe. Um, but it is very classic and when done right and the line is perfectly perpendicular to the ground, it really does a great job of elongating. All right, so here are our pants. They're giving me what I've asked for and that is, let me see all the pants. I wanna see the waistband, I wanna see the hip, I wanna see the back, I wanna see it all. So this is what we've got here. These are very close fitting in my opinion. I mean, there's not a lot of ease if anything, maybe some negative ease. I mean, I can see straight up some hip bones in here. Um, also appears to be a curved waist that sits maybe an inch below her natural waist, which is pretty common for trouser pants like this. Decent fit considering, you know, these are just for, you know, like the model. They weren't made for the model. She just showed up and put them on. Um, and then you can see nice deep hem here as well. Here is the back. Did they say these pants were semi-fitted? They're losing their minds. These are fitted, 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 especially through the thigh. Um, but beautiful seaming here through the jacket. This is a really, really beautiful, beautiful, um, classic jacket uh, blazer. You've got your collar with the stand. These are non-working vents. Like they said, the buttons are basically just there for looks. Um, but it does look really nice. <clears throat> I mean, those are some fitted pants. Am I wrong? Um, it is dipping down a little bit. It was also dipping in the front a little bit. That's kind of my concern with curved waistbands to begin with. Um, not sure when they're this high that they need to be curved. I'd rather have more room through the rise here so that it's nice and straight across in the front and the back. 
and then there she is. There's our style lines. You could make this blazer in a gajillion different colors and fabrics, um, and it would be a really, really nice statement. This, I think we'd have to work on a little bit, but you could get there. It says semi-fitted, high-rise pants. I don't think it's either one of those things. I think it's close-fitting and mid-rise. It wasn't sitting up on her waist <clears throat> at all. <coughs> so. Um, so, fabrics. Wool blends, linen blends, gabardine, jacquard. Um... Yeah, I mean, where's our suiting? Where's, you know, all of those kinds of things? Cotton blends even. Um, stretch sateen probably, especially with the how close-fitting those pants are. A uh, little limiting here. Interfacing, lightweight fusible, and then your lining fabrics. Shoulder pads, like I said. Buttons, buttons, hook and bar. Perfect. And then yardage for the jacket, two and a half yards, pants, same, lining, same. And then Vogue is still not giving us finished garment measurements on the website listing. So annoying. So I'd like to tell you what this really means, but I really have no, no concept at all. Um, that's it. That's all they're going to give me. So... That's frustrating. Um, so for right now, those things, those uh, sizes really are just arbitrary numbers. I don't really know what it means at all. But here is petite top and pants. Um, when it says petite, that just means that on the pattern pieces, there are lines to show you where to adjust for your petiteness. Um, it doesn't automatically come in petite. So 8 to 16, 16 to 24. So this time... Instead of doing the 18 to 26 size range, they've overlapped the 16s. I don't know why we can't be consistent here. Just pick one. Pick one. Let us get used to it. That way, you know, people who are in the 26 aren't frustrated whenever they go to get a pattern and realize, oh, it only comes in that yellow suit. You know, I, I don't, I don't, I do not understand why we can't just pick one size and call it that. But what do I know? Okay, off the shoulder top, close fitting through the bust, has princess seams, asymmetric hem with side slit, stitched hems, invisible back zipper, hook and eye closure. Wide leg pants, fitted through hips. All right, remember, fitted through hips. That's kind of what we were looking at with the yellow pants. So we'll be, it'll be interesting to see what these actually look like. Um, narrow waistband, back darts, invisible back zipper, hook and eye closure, and invisible hem. So this is a very vogue look. Am I right? I mean, it's just a little bit, oh, what's the word? Like, I don't want to, it's not trendy. It's just got its own, like, uniqueness to it. It's very, like, Fifth Avenue. Like, I don't know anybody in my life who has anywhere to go and wear this, but I know lots of people in my life who would just say, screw it and wear it anyways. <laughs> But this isn't, like, something that, like, we normally would be wearing to, like, you know, ladies who lunch, you know, or something like that, which is where I picture someone like this going, looking fabulous, looking expensive all the time. That's Vogue. So we do have the off-the-shoulder situation happening. It's really pretty, the way that it's laying over her shoulders, um, not too bunchy or weird. And then we have our princess seam, side seams. We've got another little seam here. And then the super long, like, asymmetrical tail. And then there are our pants hem, nice and deep again. You can't really see the thigh through here or the hips through here, but it doesn't look fitted to me. It looks like it has a really beautiful long leg line. You know, it's not curving or hugging her curves at all. Um, so I don't know where they're getting close fitted through the hip, um, especially if the last one was semi fitted. That seems contradictory, <clears throat> but here's how the back is constructed of the top. And then there, oh, it's Tom and Linda Platt also. So that could have something to do with it. The in-house designer looks at fitted and semi fitted differently than a designer would. I don't know about that. Like, aren't there like some standards to this? 
But again, you can see beautiful lines here. And that's the beginning, right? Yeah, so we're not going to get to see the pants waistband or the hip, to be honest with you. Um, I, you know, I'd like to see this little itty-bitty waistband. And I'd also like to see what this fitted through hips looks like. All right, crepe, crepe back satin, which I think is what she's wearing, ponty knit, and then interfacing, just some lightweight fusible, and then invisible zipper, elastic, one inch wide elastic. Is that for the pants? Where's the, oh, in the shoulder doodad, the little fold over thing. Okay. Um, ribbon and snaps that are apparently optional, hook and eye, invisible zipper, all right, and then about three yards for both the top and the pants individually. So yes, very Tom and Linda Platt. Now that I know that it's them, this is this that's the kind of woman that they designed for for sure. All right, now I've got this little sporty number. This is an Ann Klein. I love uh, this whole look. It's so cute. All right, semi fitted line jacket has shoulder pads. Seven eighth length two piece sleeves not on her they're about three quarters seven eighths is down here a little bit i think um with shaped vent side front and side back seams cut away front which i think just means this swoopy thing and zippered pockets which i think is the cutest part semi fitted do you see what semi fitted looks like um, tapered pants have shaped waistband, back welt pockets, and fly zipper closing. Yeah, I think those first pants either were, did not fit her, uh, the model, or are described incorrectly. <clears throat> but you can see how you have this little, like, I, it's kind of like a little lapel thing, but it's just kind of like sewn in. And then really beautiful shoulder into the arm situation. This fits her so good. Um, and then your little zippered pockets. It doesn't button or anything like that. You have your, that's what they're calling a cutaway opening where it just kind of gently opens. It's really beautiful. And then here's your pant. This is a semi-fitted pant. Oh, and then it tapers at the bottom. There's also some vents and stuff happening in the sleeve. Let's see if we can see those. Oh, look, the pant. Great. Wow, that's kind of low. I mean, this is sitting at her high hip. That is a low rise pant. Um, I can't remember if it said high rise or not, but yeah, that's a low rise pant. So if you, like me, do not like your pants to sit that low, um, you would need to adjust for the rise. Easy enough. Here's the back of the pant. Yeah, it's not like they're too big for her and just sitting too low. I mean, I think the crotch curve looks really nice. And I mean, I'm telling you, when you have these creases in there and they are going down the center of your leg like that, perpendicular to the ground, they just make you look like a million miles long. Back welt pockets. I mean, these are some nicely constructed pants for sure. Oh, here's the back. So you can see this little vent that they were talking about in the sleeve. And then you also have this little panel-y thingamajig. <laughs> um, for as nice as it looked in the front, this does look a little broad through here, but maybe that's just there for uh, wearing ease so she can put her arms in front of her. And I'm probably just being too critical. What? Me? <laughs> um, but I love an incline. I feel like we haven't seen an incline in so long. Yeah, cutest little blazer. I love that. I love that. So all the fun construction of a blazer without the annoying collar and buttons and all that kind of stuff. But this little zippered thing is really cute. And the little vent is actually shaped. Love that. And then there's the pant. Let me go back and see if they address the rise of the pant. They do not. Okay. So yeah, it's just a bit of a lower rise. I don't prefer that because... This is where my belly protrusion is, and so it just adds to it. I'd rather try and conceal it a little bit, but yeah, she looks great. Okay, yardage. Crepe, gabardine, ponty, stretch wovens, 
yeah, this is a little bit more like what I expected from the yellow suit as well. Uh, lightweight fusible, lining fabric, thread, zipper, shoulder pads, zipper, hook closures, and then ribbon and double fold bias tape, all for the pants? Hmm. Maybe on the, maybe it has something to do with the waistband construction. <clears throat> all right, so two and three eighths for the jacket, two yard, two yards for the pants. That is... I know we have one yard wonders. This is a two yard wonder. Although the rise is so short, you'd probably have to add, oh, maybe another yard to get the rise up to where I would be comfortable with it. <clears throat> okay. Cute. Love it. Love that jacket so much. All right. Now we have this fun little number, Mrs. Toppin Pants. This is a Today's Fit by Sandra Betsina. Wow, the, this is a look. Okay, so size options are, because Sandra does her own like fitting system, you get a letter, A through J, all in one envelope. Loose fitting top has built up neck, which is kind of what this is, which I love. I think that's so cool and chic. Um, also has front variations, pleated front pants, above ankle length, have fly front, elasticized back, side seam pockets, and length variations. View C is underlined. View D is lined. All right, let's take a look here. So we've got this top. I just love, love, love this detail so much. It's black, so you can kind of hardly see, but you can kind of see the facing in here a little bit. Um, and then they have done this like contrast cuff. I think that's such a cool shirt and would really elevate any look, even if you were just wearing it with jeans. But they have it with these like linen-y type of pants. And I mean, take a look at these pleats from waist to hem. Normally, they're pressed through here and then they're let go, which I imagine you could do because I don't think, I mean, maybe they're sewn all the way. You know, like the, I don't know. I don't know how the construction is, but they are pretty cool, right? I dig them. Beautiful fly construction here. And then you, oh, so then you also have this asymmetrically buttony one. Looks really cool in that weird fabric <laughs> and weird buttons. But it's super chic. I'm getting a little bit like of an Asian vibe from it. Um, sort of. I don't know, maybe like a kimono sort of, maybe the structure of it is reminding me of that. But then here is the pants again. Those pants are really freaking cool. I mean, no one's going to have pants that look like that, right? And then the back, I was curious about the back of the pants. So we have an elasticized back. We have, well, the crotch's shape is a little bit, she could use some help through here. Um... It doesn't help that her hands are in her pockets. I Why do you put the hands in the pockets and pants? Like, I get that for the model that's comfortable because they don't know what to do with their hands, I guess, when they're modeling, but it doesn't help me know what the pants are doing. Um, but nonetheless, it's just flat across the back. This one, I think, is going to be pretty polarizing. I think you guys are either going to be like, yes, I'm with you, it's so cool, or you're going to be like, no, that's cray. Cray cray. I think it's really cool. I'm digging it. Is this not giving you like some kind of kimono vibe? Even in the line drawing, it's even more prominent to me. Fun. Something different, right? Like maybe that's why I'm so excited about it because it's just not the same old, same old. All right. Wovens or stretch wovens, fine wools, lightweight wool crepe, lightweight wool garbadine, lightweight linen. And then interfacing, and then they said that C is underlined and D is lined. C is underlined. Wow, an underlined linen. That's so interesting. And then view D is lined. Hmm. Yeah, I'd like to see those pattern pieces to see is the lining like you do this accordion thing with the lining too, or is it just flat on the inside? 
Because when they do that, then you kind of get like two pants patterns in one because you could cut the lining out of self fabric and then get another pant out of it. But that's a video for another day. Um, that just feels like underlining this would be so heavy, but I guess it depends on how heavy your fabric is that you're starting with. Okay. Um, thread, buttons, steam -a seam. She uses that a lot, Sandra Bitsina. She loves the steam -a seam. Uh, ribbon, zipper, buttons, elastic. And then here's your fabric for the tops, tops, pants. Yeah, the pants are a bit of a hog. <clears throat> but I think it's cool. I don't know that I would wear them together like they have them here. But I do like them individually. Okay, so full disclosure, I got a little bit of a warning about this. Look out for the pink dress. I can't wait to hear what you have to say about it. So here we are. I'm assuming this is the one that they are talking about because this is a lot. This is a lot. Okay. Let, let me read the description. Here are the sizes, 8 to 16, 16 to 24. Lined dress has close fitting bodice with cut in shoulders and princess seams, asymmetrical ruffle, more princess seams, <laughs> left side shoulder opening, with hook and eye closure, so this is how you get in and out of it. This comes undone and falls forward, and that's how you can step into it, I guess. Uh, invisible side seam zipper. Gathered skirt with side seam pockets, attached petticoat, baby hem, thread carriers, and matching sash. Oh, this is a lot. Okay, okay. So... First and foremost, I want to say you guys know I love a ruffle and you know I love a bow. So with those two things said, I'm going to tell you I do not hate this. Not as much as maybe some of you guys do. I think that there's a time and a place for this. I don't know what time or what place, <laughs> but... <laughs> I, I, if you had somewhere to wear this, I think you would show up and people will be like, that is a bomb dress. I'd like to see it without the sash. I don't know if we're going to get any photos like that. Um, just to see if it takes it down a little bit. It's just kind of a lot, a lot with the sash and all the ruffles. But I genuinely, genuinely do not hate it like at all. I wish I had somewhere to go. But I guess if I were, like, going to go to Paris and had some, like, big, like, the Eiffel Tower dinner thing, somewhere like that, I would wear this. And also, can we please talk about her hair and makeup? Like, perfect. This little lip here, this little, oh, Vogue can be a little bit harsh with the makeup. This is perfect. If you're listening, Vogue's, Vogue people. Um, okay, like I said, with the sash, it's kind of a lot. I'd like to see it without... And then your usual gathered skirt, baby hem, petticoat underneath. Got it. Okay, so obviously with this pose, they're going for like a more, she's avant-garde, you know, she's high fashion. <laughs> I'm not buying it from her, but I can tell that's what they're going for. But this is a pretty good illustration of how this whole situation works. So there is a hook and eye, maybe two of them right here. You unhook those and this whole thing comes open. Then you unzip yourself from here and this is how you get in and out of this thing. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to get this neckline over your waist and hips um, with just this side seam zipper. And I guess they didn't want to mess up the back. All right, so this is a cut in shoulder, which I think is so beautiful, um, kind of not quite a racer back, but it does just give, it doesn't go all the way to the shoulder line, like way out here. It's just very feminine. It's very, dare I say, sexy. It's, I love a cut in shoulder. So that looks really good. Um, the fit is okay. Just this, I don't know that I like it with the sash, like at all from any angle. But it looks cool. I still like it from the back. 
And then they gave us uh, a uh, illustration. This is a Badgley Mishka. So you can probably find this somewhere um, where they sold it retail. Yeah, the short version's really cute too. This doesn't really do it justice, but it does help you kind of see without the sash maybe. It's a little bit better. So, I get nobody's going to Target in this. But, if you have some plans coming up that are a little bit special, I wouldn't write this one off. I really wouldn't. I, I like it. I like, am I crazy? Am I losing it? I don't know. I like it. <laughs> okay. So fabrics, Mikado, Shantung, Taffeta. Yeah. All of that in that sort of like heavier weight woven silky situation. <clears throat> uh, netting for your petticoat, which I've never made. I guess it's just an attached petticoat. So you just sew it into the waist seam, but that would be fun. Uh, lining fabric, interfacing, zipper, hook and eye, and ribbon. Well, they're really going through the ribbon, this collection. All right, five and a quarter yards for the dress and sash, the longest one. Oh, but then separate for the ruffle. Man, yeah, wow. Yeah, dress and sash B, almost 10 yards of fabric. Wow, that's a lot. That is a lot. So, yeah, you better be getting this stuff on sale. <laughs> okay. All right, Badgley Mishka. You know what? And I'm happy for them, too, because I don't even know if I want to say this. It, no, was I may be getting it wrong. Never mind. I'm not going to say anything because I'm not 100% sure that what I was going to say is true. And I don't want to put falsities out into the world. So... Just skip that part. <clears throat> okay. Here's another Tom and Linda plat. Right? Isn't that who the other one was? I my, Where's my memory today? I just don't have any memory left. Um, okay. So, cute little petite dress with this little fun yoke detail. Size options are 8 to 16 and 16 to 24. Fitted dress has shaped contrast neckband, side front, side back seams, three-quarter length, Set in sleeves, invisible back zipper, hook and eye closure, stitched hems. Okay. So here we go. Let's zoom in. So, yeah, I mean, well, first of all, this is tricky. So it's not as simple as it looks. This also does not go, it's not wide enough, hurt the shoulder. This little doodad should be way out here where this is. Or there should be more room in the sleeve cap, one or the other. There's also a ton of room down here. So it's just a really funky shaped sleeve head, I think, is what's happening there. Um, and then you've got your princess seams and side seams. The length is perfect on her. She's just a little bit wider than the dress is, I think, is the issue there. Um, and then here's the back. I, I don't know. Why are we making samples in black? Like, don't we know it's really hard to photograph? There's also wrinkles in it. And then what are these things? Something holding the zipper together, I guess. Yeah, this feels like either rushed or like a last minute thing. I don't know what's going on. But I am getting like, I feel like um, Vivian from Pretty Woman probably tried this on during the montage, you know, where... They're eating the pizza and he asks for the tie and she's like spinning around and all that whole scene. Um, I feel like this was probably in her dressing room, you know, it looked really good with that hat that she got the white hat with the black rim. Yeah. I've only seen that movie about a thousand times. All right. So she's okay. She's okay. I'm not, it's not, my, I don't think it's a very memorable look. Yeah, I don't know. I'd rather make memes from Simplicity, you know. But then again, that just has a more sporty vibe. So maybe that's just like my thing. All right, moderate stretch knits. So uh, only 35% cross grain. So don't think you're going to go out and like make this out of jersey or something like that. 
Um, I say that and then here's Jersey, but it is the more like structured, um, knits like scuba, like Ponty, things like that. Um, okay. So zipper hook and I, yeah, not a lot of fabric. And then your little contrast is just half a yard. So, okay, here is a little dress in house design. Okay, semi-fitted, nipped-in waist. What? Who says this, nipped-in waist? I feel like a, those of you that live in the UK, you guys say that, right? You say nipped-in? I feel like maybe one of you got hired at Vogue and started writing the descriptions <laughs> in your native tongue. Has shaped collar, gathered neckline, puffed sleeves, flared skirt, Invisible back zipper, hook and eye, neck closure, and narrow hem. View A is below mid-knee? Doesn't that mean below knee? What's below mid-knee? It has above elbow length sleeves? <laughs> okay. View B is maxi length with a high-low hem line and has long sleeves. Just a very interestingly worded um, description there. Okay, so this is the shaped neckline. That's kind of cool. It's like a collar. What is it? A uh, jewel neckline, but then is comes down to a point here. That's interesting. And then you have these gathers here. Pretty. Um, you have the gathered part in the sleeve, but it feels like the gathers stop too high. Like they should, it should also be gathered it toward the front a little bit. right? Let's see what hers looks like. Yeah, it's like a lot of gathering, but mostly in the back. Like, you know, it doesn't seem centered. But look how cool it looks here in this like lighter weight fabric. Oh, and then the waist, the nipped in waist is also like shaped. Very cool. This is the maxi with the high low. Yeah, but the waistline, I don't, it's, it's really high on her. Um, and yeah, her too. So it's like the point of the waist hits at your natural waist, and all of this is a little bit higher than that, which that's really cute and flattering. Yeah, fun, different. You've also got this little shaped or this wide waistband in the back as well with some gathers at the top and bottom of it. But look how much gathering is yeah the sleeve is funky why is it gathered way down here on the back but not also the front which is what is causing this odd wrinkle easy enough to fix like do not be dissuaded by that you just you know rotate your ruffles wherever you want them but um on this one though there i don't know i don't know what's happening you're gonna have to look at your own sleeve and determine what to do. I can't make heads or tails of why that's so weird on this one. Cute though. Like I said, something a little bit visually different and interesting. Look how cool. You can't see because both of those have such a like a small, well, they have prints on them. So it's really hard to see. But like, Imagine if you did piping in here, how fun that would be. It, it, uh, you know what, though? Careful, because now that I'm saying that, I'm starting to see how it could look a little bit like Wonder Woman, like a little bit like a costume, like a shield, like a, you know, with this point especially. But what if you did like, like you bejeweled oh. this part, this neckline thing? Okay, Honey doesn't like that idea, but I do. Um... You know what I mean? I don't know. I just feel like you could really make something really interesting out of these, these little panels and stuff. <laughs> All right. Sateen, rayon chalet, linen blends, and then interfacing. And then you've got an invisible zipper, hook and eye, usual stuff. And then it takes two and a half yards-ish. The longer one takes four. Yeah, just lots of gathers, lots of fabric that make up those gathers. 
Okay, here is 90s, which I'm surprised it's taken us this long to get into like a 90s look. But um, we've got 8 to 16, 16 to 24 is the size range. Rachel Comey, um, who was known for very um, minimal, very usually oversized, very simple style lines, um, but also chic. So fitted through bust, slightly flared, flared above ankle length dress, has empire seamed bodice with bust arts, shaped armhole bands, straight front bands with contrast facings straight front bands is that this placket here is that what they mean front neck and hem openings invisible side seam zipper hong kong finished seams stitched hems separate pattern pieces for your cup sizes all right let's take a look so okay okay so you've got this like crew neck with this the center front bands it's open from this stitch line up um, these little things are shaped so that they're wider at the shoulder and narrower underneath love that then you've got a empire waist seam like this is a true seam that goes all the way around all of this is stitched closed stitched closed it looks like a button placket but it's not and then from here down it's also opened the contrast facing or whatever I don't know what they mean by that so maybe they'll give us some more pictures but on first look this is really nice oh and here are the bus starts as well here's the back so the back has bus starts again this seam it's, it kind of disappears it's like a little bit iridescent but this seam goes all the way around you've got a center back seam down here for some added shaping. This is pretty. Yeah, I mean, there's not much to make of it because they are so simple, but I mean, look how great it looks on her. Um, and I don't think you have to be, you know, super flat all around to pull this off. I think um, it's got enough uh, designies and wearingies in it. I just think she looks super, super cool. This is how I feel like my style is what it's evolving into. Simpler, but also still chic. I really like this one. So here's a better view. You can see that they are still calling out this contrast, although we weren't able to see it in the photos. Um, but yeah, I think it's really cool. I think it's really cool. And you could obviously make it with more ease in the waist if that was making you uncomfortable, how sort of slim it was through there and through the hips. I mean, it is somewhat fitted through, I would say, the empire seam through the hip. You know, just add some ease there. I like this. I think I'll probably be picking this one up on the sale. Does it look like me? <clears throat> All right. Midweight cotton linen, a thousand percent. That's what I'm envisioning. Just the most comfortable linen dress ever. Um, PK, and then for your contrast, you can do broadcloth or chalet. It's such a small piece. I mean, what is it? Yeah, half a yard. Just find something in your in your scraps. Or can we just use the same? Or I mean, I guess you could. It might be fun to put something really interesting in there. Anyways, uh, zipper, hook, and eye double fold tape three packages of quarter inch double fold tape what could that be for three whole packages hmm <laughs> okay and then it takes about two and a half yards plus your little bit of interfacing and lining and the contrast oh i'm sorry the contrast is one and five eighths of a yard so they have you doing that all the way down here, even though you don't see this part. <coughs> Excuse me. And they didn't really call out that all this whole thing is contrast. But that's cut, you know, straight of grain. Oof. I don't know. I don't like that. I don't like how you, it's such a fabric waster. 
like one and five eighths just to cut out what a six inch strip and then the rest of it what I guess you have to make it something else out of it okay well I would that's what I would do is I would get this get the fabric plan on making a top and this band out of whatever contrast fabric I get um, and lay out the pattern pieces that way with the top and that piece on it just to make sure I wasn't, you know, completely just wasting fabric. Okay. I'm kind of surprised that she was able to pull that off in fast fashion. Maybe she did a similar thing where, um, or, you know, she's making so many of them she can cut a gazillion strips. That's probably what it was. Okay. Sorry, my mind was wandering. Okay, we have a little jacket. This is Julio Cesar. He's usually got, like, yes, lots of mixed prints, um, usually mixed mediums, like he'll, like, layer on all kinds of stuff. This is a line jacket, fitted through bust, has back platform effect, asymmetric front contrast, separating zipper closure. Oh, that's a little zipper in there. I didn't even notice Two piece set in sleeve, shoulder pad, side, front seam pockets, which is right here. That's really cool. So you have the princess seam, and the pocket is inserted into that princess seam. I love that. That's a detail you can add to any jacket that you have. And then I love how this is the little zipper here. I mean, I hate the zipper that they chose, but nonetheless, like, that's cool. There's a little zipper here. Fits her really well little bit of like a grown on the neckline situation with the neck and then peplum effect yes it gives me um like horseback riding jacket in a good way I mean this fabric certainly is very funky but yeah you gotta try and imagine it you know not in these crazy colors imagine it like even in just Sometimes whenever, like, a, a cover is just, like, so bonkers, I just picture it in black, you know, because I just, cl like, clean slate, picture it in black, and then you can get a better vibe for it. So if we're picturing this in black and you, like, let's say we did this in black velvet and this in black satin or something, then all of a sudden you can get, like, a an idea for, like, what it could be um, when it's not... <laughs> all of this <clears throat> but I can also see it just like in like a plaid brushed cotton type of thing um, or even like a stripe and then have the stripe go the other way there's lots of fun options but yeah just trying to erase that lime green and pink floral brocade all right So brocade, linen, gabardine, medium weight wool, lightweight fusible, you've got your lining fabrics, um, thread, zipper, shoulder pads. Two and a quarter yards for the, like most of the jacket, and then one yard for that little panel. Interfacing and then fully lined. No, not fully lined. Uh, maybe everything but the sleeve is lined? It doesn't say what's lined, but obviously not everything. Not even this whole thing. So maybe just the sleeves. I don't know. Can you see in that little bit right there? Yeah, that's lined. So maybe just the bodice? Okay, now we have this coat. In-house design. I think I'm really going to like this one. <laughs> okay. 6 to 14 and then 16 to 24 on the size range. Loose fitting, lined, double breasted A-line coat has mandarin collar. Set in flared sleeves, which is really hard to see because she's, I don't know, but over here you can see it better. Um, side seam pockets, length variations. View A is hip length and has purchase flexible braid trim. View B is mid-knee length. Okay. 
So I don't, I don't know that I like the trim, or maybe I don't like this combination. I think that's it. I think I don't like the pink fabric. I don't know. Something about it is throwing me off. But again, when I'm just picturing it in black, I love it. Um, I love the shape of it. I love the sleeve. I love the collar. I love that it's only buttoned up up here. It's like a combination cape and jacket all in one. Um, I think they were trying really hard to make this like a springy thing. And so it looks a little bit, this one looks really retro to me, like 1960s. And maybe that's where the inspiration came from. I'm not sure, but I'm picturing it more in solids, more all one color or like monochromatic. But I do think it's really, really cool. And it, this is not difficult to sew. So if you've never made like a Vogue jacket before sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming because the construction process is just so you know detailed and elevated but this is like fitting is barely an issue here I mean very roomy obviously in the waist and hip but even in the bust it's not that bad it's really only fitted through the shoulders the sleeve isn't super fitted obviously it's flared so it gets less fitted as it goes down a mandarin collar is really easy to construct especially if it's lined so I just really feel like this is a great, a great Vogue jacket. I'd be surprised. Is it a very easy pattern? You know, like the very easy Vogue. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's cool. Um, it is, it says easy here, but it's not like branded as the very easy Vogue, which I'm surprised. Yep. All right, wool blends, tweed, jacquard. I mean, I think you could also add in, I mean, all kinds of different fabrics. I don't know, whatever your heart desires. There's nothing really limiting you here. Obviously, you know, you need to go to more of the mid to heavyweight type stuff, but, but yeah, I really like it. I think I would have liked it more in a plaid. Which is maybe what they thought they were getting out of this, but I'm picturing like equestrian type of plaid or even collegiate type of vibe with these buttons and the. Anyways, I'm digressing again. Okay, lightweight fusible lining fabric, <clears throat> thread, shoulder pads, buttons, shank buttons, and then covered buttons. Oh, because the bright pink one, <clears throat> the buttons matched. Okay. And only two and three quarter yards of fabric for the short one and three and five eighths for the long one, which I wouldn't make the long one anyways. It's just a little overwhelming, but two and a half yards, that's not bad. Well, two and three quarters, I can't really call that. I like to, <laughs> I like to make it sound better than it really is and just call everything by the half mark, but two and three quarters is substantial enough. Okay, so in the simplicity video, I skipped over the vintage patterns and some of you commented that I should at least look at the line drawings so that's what we will do we will analyze the line drawings I don't like looking at vintage patterns because a they're usually always done in illustrations only and there isn't an actual body wearing them so obviously they're going to draw this to look like it fits her perfectly um, which really doesn't give us any insight into the pattern at all <clears throat> But also like the style of it and stuff. Sometimes I just, because I don't sew vintage, I don't, like I miss out on key details that you vintage lovers would be like, that's the whole point. Um, but we're going to look at the line drawings and then move on from them. So this one is a, what is this even? A jacket, a shirt, blouse, skirt, and belt. Okay. So this is the blouse. And it has this little collar, double-breasted, these little vents on the side with these beautiful French seams here. Love that. The sleeve detail is actually really sweet. It kind of looks like a bow or something. Um, and beautiful seaming. Why do they ever take these seams away? I don't know. You've even got like the little neck, the shoulder darts here. Love that. 
And then this view is the same, but the collar is different, and then it's single-breasted. Oh, and the sleeve is different, too. So no collar. This is just, are these just flaps? And then this skirt. Now, I've seen this skirt like this a thousand times, um, and I actually really do like the skirt. I like when it has these little accents on the... Do you see what I mean? I don't know what to call anything. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what anything is called. Um, but it has like, this is a pocket and then it has this little flappy thing that comes down. I think that's cool. Um, very full skirt and then a, a self belt um, that you make out of the self fabric. So she's cool. I like her. Double breasted open neck, wide drape collar, three quarter length sleeves, drape cuffs, single breasted collarless built up neckline. Three quarter length sleeves are raglan in front and kimono cut in back. I didn't even notice that. Raglan sleeve here and then the whole piece. So imagine your back pattern piece, right? With the sleeve. This is all like an L shape, but it also has this little piece attached to it too. So interesting. All right, vintage people, I'm getting it. Wide flared skirt, deep unpressed inverted pleat at center front and center back, side zip, and then view D has a belt buckle with prong. That's cool. That's a really cool design. Why aren't we doing stuff like that anymore? I don't know. Now we have this cutie. Looks like an apron. Oh, yes, it does because it kind of is. Vintage 1953 wrap dress has darted front and back bodice, which is what this is. That's the front. This is the back. Waist and shoulder seams. Front and back bodice, waist and shoulder. Uh -huh. Back wraps around front under, back wraps around under the front closing with a hook and eye and has concealed patch pockets. Front has button closing at the waist. View A has contrast skirt and binding. View B has purchased bias tape, separate, blah, blah, blah. So I lied. This is the front because those are the pockets, right? So confusing. I have to look at it on her. Yeah, it just like, yeah, wraps around you. This is like some kind of origami but it sure does look cool <clears throat> okie dokie now we have tops oh this is a dress and a knit top okay pullover dress semi fitted at bust skims waist and hips is mid calf length and has shape seams asymmetric inseam pockets neck and armhole facings and optional top stitching knit t-shirt designed to be form fitting to layer under the dress has three quarter length sleeves and stitch shims marcy tilton okay so 6 to 14 16 to 24 is a size range it's basically a pinafore with a t-shirt underneath but you can see the line drawings gonna be better um to show this but um you've got your arms eye here this kind of comes across in some kind of funky way you've got uh pocketing here but also all of these seams too it's really hard to see on this fabric why are we trying here we go this might be better no it's not any better there's a seam here a seam here cute little cap sleeve though um there's her pocket and then all of these seams Let's look at the line drawing. Oh, look at the back. Uh, that's not the most flattering. Why are they letting these people sit down in the dresses? I don't understand. Okay, now you can get a much better idea. And this is also like Marcy Tilton loves to do funky dunk stuff like this. So the fact that they were able to um, get normally her stuff has a lot more visual interest like in the in the modeled garment this visual interest comes in the form of all of these seams which you couldn't really see in either one of those fabrics so that's a little bit you know sad but either way 
very, very Marcy Tilton with all of these, all of these seam lines. And then your basic little tank or tee. <clears throat> see, it looks kind of normal right here from far away. But then whenever you see all those style lines, you're like, oh, wait, there's actually like a lot going on here. Okay, two-way stretch knits, 50%, so pretty stretchy. Uh, stable cotton, rayon lycra knits, ponty, scuba. I don't think ponty or scuba has 50% cross-grain stretch, but okay. Stretch wovens with good stretch and recovery. I don't know many of those that have 50% either. Rayon lycra or cotton jersey, this is all for the t-shirt. So maybe that's what they mean. The t-shirt needs 50%, but everything else can be a little bit more flexible. Hmm. And then, goodness gracious, three yards of fabric. And then one and a half for the t-shirt. Okay, now we have this number. Top, shorts, and skirt. I'm liking this. This is what Simplicity tried to do with that god-awful dress with the flowers from last week. I know y'all are mad at me for reminding you about it because I know we all wanted to wash that out of our memories. But I feel like this is what they were trying to do <laughs> with that. And this is it better executed. Peplum top, close fitting through bust, has square neckline, which I adore. Gathered Empire Waist, also a door. Center back zipper, stitched hems. View A has elbow length sleeves. View B has purchased bias armhole facings. Loose fitting high waist shorts and skirt have elastic waist side seam pockets and stitched hems. I love it together. And if you would have told me that we are going to be taking like a very loose fitting floaty top and putting them with elastic shorts, I would have said, no, we're not. But I, I think it looks kind of cool. It's a little bit like a layered, like, a dress with tears. You know what I mean? I also don't know that you need that center back zipper. This might be wide enough. And kudos to them for going for this fabric with such defined, like, bullseye type thing, especially in a short where it could have easily landed in the wrong areas if you know what I'm saying with my cursor <laughs> I do wish they were able to get these a little bit more centered but what can you do so yeah so here it is this must be the skirt it looks even cooler as a skirt I think because again with that tiered vibe this is the sleeveless look and you can see here really why those remember a few patterns back where they had the like though with the pink dress with the big ruffle where they had like the cut in um, shoulder, what it had, I forget how they described it. But see how this one comes all the way across and covers like her whole arm area? I like it when it's cut in just a little bit. And you can alter your patterns to do this, it's not very difficult. Um, but really pretty with the top stitching on this too. Kind of adds to the vibe. And then there she is with like just, they swapped out her shorts for some regular pants. I like. Ooh, I don't like that. Or that. See, okay, so this is another issue whenever you have one pattern with a sleeved option and a sleeve less option. The sleeve less top, the arm side needs to be drafted different than the sleeved version. Um, and often they don't provide two different bodices so you get all this gaping and or whatever is happening under here hers on the back yeah is not I mean it's obviously very hard to see but it doesn't seem like it's cutting under her arm too closely like it is for her she might also be fuller busted so it's just really hard to say exactly what's happening but I do know for sure that this gaping here is because this arm side was drafted for a sleeve. Um, and when you leave the sleeve off, you know, you get the gaping because that's the ease that you need to like, you know, move your arms when you have your arms in the sleeve. Okay, enough about that. 
Yeah, I mean, it's pulling a little bit through here. She might just be um, a slightly bigger bust cup than this was drafted for or made for. But I think it's cool. I think it's really cool. Gosh, that's three Vogue patterns that I'm already, like, really, really liking. So, here's the top. Super cute, right? Can't you see this being made out of a gajillion different fabrics? Um, here's the sleeveless version. I actually really like the sleeve one better. And then you have your wide leg short and skirt. I love how deep the waistband is. Love. They didn't show us that, but, um, so, I mean, I still want to see, I wish we could see that in some of the modeled versions as always. Okay. And Cara, which is what she's wearing, linen, poplin, gingham, chambray. Honestly, you guys, like truthfully, any mid-weight woven, go to town. Go to town making it out of anything you want. I actually think the more structured, the better, because it's going to, you know, set off this sleeve and the volume here in the um, shirt hem and the shorts and skirt as well. 20-inch <clears throat> zipper, single-fold bias tape elastic two yards for the top sleeveless top is one and a half ish and then the shorts are one and a half ish and the skirt is two and a half ish um but you can even make that skirt a little bit shorter and you know it's it's an interesting length considering she's a model so i'm sure she's like i don't know five 10 or something, maybe taller. Um, so for most of us, we'd probably want to cut off a few inches of that anyways. Okay, take a look at this. I feel like I've seen this before, but wow. I cannot believe that is some expert seamstressing to get this. Oh, wow. That's just really impressive. Okay. Okay. This is top, um, six to 14, 16 to 24, slightly flared top has front and back one inch tucks. That's how they were able to do it. These stripes are one inches wide. They knew they had one inch tucks. Boom. Um, collar band, side front and side back seams, concealed button front closure, narrow hems, view A is hip length, sleeveless and has narrow hems. View B is tunic length and has long sleeves ending in button cuffs with continuous lap opening. So is she wearing A? It looks really cool in the stripe, I will say. And certainly it's gotta make it a little bit easier to um, make these tucks whenever you have the fabric as a marker already. Yeah, it's cool. Hmm. The corseted look is very on trend again, and maybe that's kind of the vibe they were going for with this. Hmm. And they're calling this sleeveless, but really it's just because it's it does not have a sleeve. This is all grown on. Um, so it doesn't technically have a sleeve, but obviously it covers your shoulder and most of your bicep. Yeah, I think... Mm. I think I like it. I don't know if I like it enough to fuss with all this and to actually sew that. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm like, eh, that seems like a lot of work. Um, but it's cool. And if I saw one of you wearing it, I would be like, that's a cool top. But I did. Have we seen this? I feel like this whole idea of like voluminous, you know, blouson type of top cinched in with pin tucks and then released in the bottom. I feel like I might even have a dress like that or something. Maybe in a dress. Would I like it more as a dress? No, I don't think so. All right. Double Georgette. Huh. Gauze, which I think is what she's wearing. Cotton shirting, which is the white version. And then one inch lengthwise stripe, just as an option, which is what they did here. <clears throat> Fusible buttons. Oh, right, because it has this. Yeah, that's this is a lot of work. This top is a lot of work. 
um, one and three quarter yards for the striped version the girl's wearing, and then the longer version is two and five eighths. It also just kind of feels a little bit fussy to wear, maybe. All right, another top. They really went all in on the tops. Peplum top, fitted through bust, has stand collar, princess seams, concealed front button closure, and baby hems. View A, which is what she's wearing, has below elbow length cuffs. I don't understand that terminology at all. View B has long sleeves, with button cuff with button cuffs separate pattern pieces for cup sizes i think that's like the third time we've seen that this collection the cup sizes so that's really good all right so we've got this they're also really going deep into the little stand collar princess seams right oh no it doesn't match That shouldn't bother me as much as it does, but it, it bothers me a lot. I don't think that that is the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. Oh, bummer. I don't even know how that happens. I mean, obviously the buttons are off somewhere, but it looks straight here. Anyways, I cannot overanalyze that. We have to move on. Okay, so you got your sleeve with all of this little great ruffling detail. I like the sleeve, actually. Um... This really deep cuff, and then they said like baby hems, high low. We've got um, this version here, which ironically is a more difficult fabric to work with, but they were able to get this right. So I don't think anything's wrong with the pattern. I just think execution on the other one maybe was a little bit rushed. But this one just has like a plainer sleeve, long sleeve, very simple, but it's a simple looking top but it's got a lot going on you know yeah yeah I don't love this bottom half situation but everything from the waistband up primo 10 out of 10 this this is I don't know I I, I just would never wear that I don't know anybody who is wearing like this much volume in a top but maybe if you made it into a dress or even just like swapped out the bodice you know and kept this really cool sleeve for something just straighter and just a lot it's like gather on gather on gather on gather it does look better in the lighter weight fabric yeah and again as a dress it would be really pretty in the more structured one. Line drawings. Yeah, I love the sleeve. I just don't love the sleeve and also this. Like, couldn't it have just been flat like this one is? And also with the high-low, like, are we, are we not done with the high-low yet? <laughs> I think I'm done with the high-low. All right. So, yardage, poplin, broadcloth, charmeuse, cotton shirting, fusible interfacing, buttons, buttons, that's it. Um, this one is, I don't know if I said the sizes, 8 to 16 and then 16 to 26. So it is that larger size range. Uh, two and three quarters of a yard for both versions. Okay, remember I mentioned corsets? Here they are. This one does not fit her, but <laughs> we're going to look at it anyways. Of all the places where we need to have separate bust cups, this is it. And they did not give them to us. It's clearly, this is a, too small for her. Um, close fitting, interface, boned line corsets have bra with underwire, seam detail, continuous bias binding finish, back facing, front extension, and busk closing. I don't know what busk closing is. Length variations. Okay, so corsets are having a moment, especially among Gen Z. 
I've seen them pull them off in really cool ways, especially when layering. So they will layer them like on top of oversized white button down shirts and it just looks really, really cool. So normally I would be like, what the heck is happening? But I've seen this trend actually kind of come about and evolve and I've seen, like I said, seen it in cool ways on many different body types. And so I'm here for the corset. I don't know if I'm here for making my own corset, especially one that I can't even guarantee is going to fit well. But you can see this cup is not, I mean, her breast is all the way over here. So you know, I don't know about this one, this particular corset. We're going to look at it on another body, I think, here in a second. But um, having a little point thing and, of course, all of the seaming detail, very classic corset. This, does this fit her better? No. I think the shape of this is too you, too, too curved in. It needs to be more like this, you know, flared out at the edges, I think. I don't know. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of really great corsets already on the market. Uh, patterns, I mean, like people like Made for Mermaids and Madeline and those that are already into kind of like the undergarment world um, might have some better corsets than this one. Oh, here it is on another, a third body type and still something's not right in the bust. Like this one, I feel like her bust is way down here. Of course, I'm totally speculating. But if I can judge from what I see of her cleavage, I'm thinking it comes down here. This isn't this isn't actually holding up her breast, which is the whole point. But it does do the wham, bam, thank you, ma'am here on the waist. That's for sure. <clears throat> Ties up in the back, which you don't actually tie that. You hook it in the front, but that's a cute detail. Wait a minute. This girl is not this girl. Do they think they're fooling me? Is that her with her hair pulled to the side? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe she just has an interesting profile. I thought that they were like, forgot to take a picture of the back and we're like, here, Brittany, in the office. <laughs> you have blonde hair. <laughs> you come pose for me. I mean, maybe they did. Why I called her Brittany, I don't know. Blonde hair, Brittany. That does not look like the same girl. But maybe it is. <laughs> All right, so there you can see them there. I wish that they fit better. I wanted to like them more. But it just looks like it hurts, right? Doesn't it look really uncomfortable? All right. So, satin, brocade, damask, shantung, interfacing. You have to line it. And then, obviously, a ton of notions. So, corset busk, I guess, is actually a thing. I've never heard of it, but I've also never made a corset. Um, a whole bunch of eyelets, uh, boning, um corset lace tipping all kinds of stuff I've never even heard of before um view a is one yard lining is this amount you get the idea little bits I should try it I'm not gonna try one of these but I'd also like to try one that has a strap too all right kind of rounding things out here we've got a skirt love very loose fitting, asymmetric wrap skirt, has waistband, side wrap tie, handkerchief hemline, and baby hems. Oh, I like this so much. So, wrap skirt, it's nothing exceptional, except that the skirt is like a flounce, and I love flounces so much. Just the drape, it's so pretty. I love how they combine two different fabrics here. It's like a men's shirt, had a baby with a skirt. Oh, why do I love this so much? Love that one a little bit less, but I'm also not really an animal print girl. But you get the idea of what it would look like in like a lightweight, silky, like, you know, 
flowy sitch. Here's the back. Love the back. I need this. I need this in my life. I would wear it styled just like they have. Tank top, this little doodad. Maybe not like stilettos, um, but, you know, a wedge or something. <clears throat> Love it. Love it. Love it. And I think I have the perfect fabric. Dang, I'm buying another Vogue pattern next weekend. 6 to 14, 16 to 24. Don't worry, if I end up buying a bunch of them, I'll do a haul and show you guys what I got. Poplin, Charmeuse, Linen Blends, Broadcloth, Lightweight Fusible Interfacing, No Notions. Um, and then you're interfacing. I think you're just interfacing the little waistband and tie. But then... A is one and three quarters of a yard with a one and one quarter yard contrast. The reason why, and the, the one that's all one fabric takes three yards, the reason why is because you have that flounce. So it is not cut like rectangles. All of these are cut like little semicircles. And when you put them together on this waistband, it's what creates all the beautiful drape. That's what creates all these folds. It's just so pretty. Honey, why are you so upset about that? <laughs> Late at night, for some reason, she gets real protective. So she hears even the slightest noise outside, um, and she starts to worry. And it's about 10 o'clock, so prime time for her protective skills to come into play. All right. Pants and tie belts. Uh, 8 to 16, 16 to 24. Paper bag, waist pants, semi-fitted through hip, have front pleats, side seam pockets, matching tie belt and fly zipper. View A is above ankle length with button cuffs and side seam opening. View B is full length and has stitched hems. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, okay. <laughs> They're not, they're not bad. There's nothing, I mean, they're not unique or special in any way. I feel like we probably have something similar in our stashes already. I'm also remembering those Simplicity pants from last week that were so, so, so interesting. These are kind of like the safer version of that. Like if you saw those and you were like, I get why she likes them, but they're a little bit much for me. This might be the little bit, you know easier way to kind of go that same route. I think they have a similar shape. Um, yeah, the button cuff detail is interesting, though. I do like that. And then, you know, you have the wider leg option, too. This one, I also feel like, is more paper baggy than the last one. Paper bag waists are really hard for apples, um, and anybody who has like any bit of a waist pooch because you have to tuck in, like you have to tuck in and you can't really tuck in with anything other than like a knit top. That's really just it. It has to be close fitting, which can sometimes accentuate, you know, and make your waist look bigger than it is. And for me, my waist is my smallest part. So I want that to still look the smallest. And if we zoom out here, you can see, you know, it just looks wider. And she's little, so it doesn't really matter for her. Um, but I don't want to look wider. You know, this one doesn't seem as paper bag to me. Like, I don't know if it was just pressed better or the fabric is crisper or something. I don't know. But um, it doesn't seem to have the same effect as hers do. They didn't have two different waist options, right? Yeah, they're the same. So, just something to keep in mind. This is very ready-to-wear friendly, right? Don't we see these in the stores all the time? Okay. Cotton twill, lightweight denim, linen blends, 
Also, lots and lots and lots of other fabrics. <laughs> um, fusible interfacing, lining, fabric, fully lined? No way. Oh, just the pockets. Okay. And then two and a half yards, almost three yards for the wider, longer versions. Version. All right. Then we've got a leather jack. Oh, bomber jacket. Ah, another bomber with a zipper front. I am on the hunt for a bomber jacket with a button front. And I am not kidding you guys. There is not a pattern that exists that has that. And if you are able to find me one, I will pay you. I'll, I'll buy the pattern for you and for me. I don't know. Like, I just cannot find one anywhere. Anywhere. They all have zip fronts. I don't, I don't, I don't even know why. But I just want a button front bomber jacket. Okay. Thanks. So alphanumeric sizing, first time we've seen that, small to large in one envelope and then extra large to 3x in another envelope. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. It feels like women's and men's is kind of what they were going for. But I mean, maybe that's just me. Loose fitting lined unisex bomber jacket has drop shoulders here. Back yoke welt pockets in the front that's fun to do on synthetic leather um front separating zipper closure rib knit trim and collar variations okay pretty standard uh bomber jacket wise you got your rib knit trim like it said welt pockets zip front and just your regular collar drop shoulders there it is in you know a little bit I guess more sporty of a fabric. Show me this back yoke. There we go. Yeah, pretty standard in terms of, you know, um, bomber jackets. Really nothing exceptional, design wise. <clears throat> oh, line drawings, which you can see here. I missed that one has a collar and one does not. I do wish that they had this option with the knit, but that would be the only thing that separates this from like really any other bomber jacket on the market. But I think for a unisex look, it looks good on both of them. You know, it doesn't look like she's wearing her boyfriend's jacket and it doesn't look like he's wearing his girlfriend's jacket. Um, yeah, I think it looks good on both of them, considering, you know, we all have, women and men have such different body types. Okay. Synthetic leather, poly jacquard, which I, might be what she was wearing, uh, wool blends, twill, lining fabrics, zipper, zipper, rib knit trim, and then here is your yardage. Two and a quarter for the smaller sizes. Two and a half for the larger. So, oh no, the I'm sorry, the um, collarless and then the collared, and then your lining. So it is pretty much fully lined. Yeah, nice to have a little bomber jacket pattern in your stash if you don't already. And that is it. That is our Vogue Spring. Um, we had 20 patterns to review. I would like to see the, what's it called? Um, oh, wow, they put her on the front. Lookbook, that's what I want. <clears throat> so, let me know what you guys thought of this collection. You saw the ones that I'm going to be getting. I think there ended up being four of them. Um, the Rachel Comey, for sure. I also liked this one, although I don't think I'm going to worry about adding that one to my stash just yet. Loved this little number here. The skirt for sure is coming home with me. So is this. Loved that so much. And then this one was really cool too. So I do think that there were a lot of patterns that had some really interesting details, which I feel like we've been sort of lacking, even in Vogue. 
um, I feel like everything just kind of took a, took a very, I don't know if it was the pandemic or what, but everything got really basic, real basic. Oh, and this jacket too was the fourth one. Um, I think that people started to see, oh, everyone's just at home. And so then that all of a sudden meant that we just wanted like simple things. And I don't necessarily believe that that's true. Even if you're home, I think, um, or at least now we're in the place where even if I'm home, I still want to look good. Like you could wear this around the house and still look exceptional. You know what I mean? So I uh, appreciate the fact that they're bringing back, you know, a lot of these like unique designs, unique details that Vogue is known for. So let me know what you guys thought. Um, leave them in the comments below. I have Simplicity's first impression video linked in the end slate here um, if you want to go watch last week's video. Otherwise, I will see you all next time. Bye!